makes you a very special person. That's why you're a difference maker and you're being the change, like what Don Blackard would say. So let's go because, you know, a lot of us want to restore our republic. We know we've lost it. We're losing it. We've lost it. We need to change directions and we actually need to do that without creating a civil war because mm-hmm. a lot of we don't want another civil war like our country went through uh with the north and the south and friends and families fighting each other we don't want that we want one country that's our country and we want our republic back so mm-hmm. let's go this is actually part two part one was much more intense it was basically how we lost our republic in the first place i'm going to go through a couple of slides that are gonna give you a a high level overview of what we did last. But then we're gonna come to this section and this is a little less intense, but I did decided to do this because I had all kinds of people who said, I've lost my faith, Mm -hmm. Uh, my faith in God, my faith Mm -hmm. in the prophets, I'm just totally done. We've been since 2019 and nothing's changed. And I'm, I'm just, I'm done. So I wanted to do this show to show them, no, there's a reason it's taken so long. Nothing in the world happens unless God picks the time and he's always on time. He's never late. So what this is all about is if we had had the disclosure that the election was in truth stolen and we had tried to ramrod Donald Trump back into the office of the presidency and take Biden out and declare the election fraudulent, there were enough people at that point in time that we would absolutely had civil war. Look at what they did in Portland and and all over the country with the riots. So this has been to slowly, we've been indoctrinated for at least 20 to 30 or maybe in 40 years. There's a large portion of America that has been totally, utterly, completely brainwashed. So this period from 2019 till now has been to slowly drip the truth out and to, to, to basically counter oppose what Trump did to make America great versus what Biden is doing to tear America down. So with that, the message to the people out there is be patient. This is coming to an end. It's all a movie. So I'm going to go back now and I'm going to give you the essence of the last show. Uh, I'm going to go all the way back to the year 1871. And in 1871, something that was one of those tipping points, one of many. And we found out at that point in time that America lost its constitution, that we became a corporation and that we were in fact under, because of bankruptcies that had happened, we were a United States crown corporation under the Vatican and the Swiss and the Swiss government. So with that, I'm going to read you an excerpt from from our congressional record, and I'm going to refer you to the 41st, uh, 41st Congress, Section 34, Session 3, Chapter 61 and 62. And it says that on this date, Congress passed an act titled An Act to Provide a Government for the District of Columbia, i.e. the Act of 1871. Now, I want to tell you what that means. That means that there's a 10-mile area within the United States of America that is not one of our states, that is not part of the United States of America. It has its own governmental system. And that is where our our Congress sets. And that's very important because we lost our constitution and we became a corporation. And if we go to the next slide, I'm gonna tell you what our, what, how we were originally formed. We were the first nation in the world to be formed as a republic. And that is very unique. Today, we hear ourselves called what? A democracy, but we're not a democracy. If we go back, it says the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the what? The Republic Republic. for which it stands. One nation under who? God. God. All right. Now, what is a Republic? A Republic is a government of the people, by the people, for for the the people. people. It is a government with First and Second Amendment rights, with the freedom of speech. It is a government based upon self-governance by the people. And in order to be a government that is controlled by the people for the people, something unique has to happen. The people have to be educated. So that's why one of the first things our founders did was found Harvard so that everybody could be not only illiterate, but so that they could also be able to, to, to read the Bible and understand the Bible. Then they had pamphleteers that passed out information so that we would be politically astute, so that when we went to vote, 
we would be voting because we were we were literate and we were informed and we were making decisions based on what was in the best interest of who not ourselves but in the best interest of the nation i forgot to turn my phone off so basically that was what made us unique because we were not controlled by special interest groups at that point in time we were the people voicing our opinions as to what we thought was the best form of government for ourselves so as a result of the act of 1871 we lost that and we became a corporation so here's the definition of a corporation a legal entity that is separate and distinct from its owners in other words it gives them some some freedom from liability and what is their charter well instead of being a government of the people for the people it is a charter of a corporation and the only responsibility a corporation has is a fiduciary responsibility to its shareholders so what does that mean mm -hmm. we have 2000 page omnibus bills that are written that spend trillions of our dollars and they're signed they're, they're they're basically written by special interest groups they're signed by our congress without ever reading them and systematically one by one they take our rights away and they create what a legal dictatorship that's the system legally they have been passing laws to strip away our freedoms and our rights since 1871 so with that we can move on and we'll start to get into the stuff for today as soon as my slide yeah. presentation will yeah. work so basically this takes us up to one donald j trump and i want to go to the bible i believe that donald j trump is anointed by god uh, and i believe that there's reason to believe make an analogy at least that he's our cyrus king cyrus was the king in the bible that set the that set the Israel the Israelites free and helped them what finance the building of the temple and the wall, and so what did Trump do? He came in and he did what built the wall to try to end our border incursion. And what did Biden do the second he came in? Tore down the wall. Stopped it. He said we're not going to build anymore. And what did Trump do to make America great? It's not that Trump is a genius. It's that Trump has advisors, particularly in the military who know what it makes takes to make a nation great. And it's very simple, folks. God said, I will make you able to, to take the complex and make it simple so that people can see the truth, so the truth can set them free. So here's what Trump did to make America great. He basically came back in and gave us our oil and our manufacturing, and we became a net exporter of oil. He changed regulations so that money could flow in to this country then we would be able to build infrastructure and factories. He then geared up our manufacturing. Then he went against China and said, we're going to impose a tariff against you to do what? To make Chinese goods too expensive so that we would manufacture more ourselves. Because now if you have control of your natural resources, control of manufacture, control of trade, so we went from losing trade to, to fair profit-making trade, then you have money and with that money the global elite buy power in order to what to imprison us to take away our rights so trump turned all that around and america went from ten thousand dollars ten thousand in the stock market to 30. what did biden do he undid it he he took away our oil so that we were begging for oil and he he basically undid every single solitary thing that trump did this is part of that drip 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 folks we would need to see the contrast between what Trump did to do what make America great compared to what Biden did, the exact opposite, which has resulted in the financial crisis that we're in today. So with that, we'll move on. And my computer is not cooperating. All right. So this is from an earlier presentation, but I need you to understand this is coming from God. In the Bible, it says that the kingdoms of man must fall in order that he can implement the kingdom of God. Well, what that means is communism must fall and capitalism must fall. And what does that mean? Well, who are the two nations that represent those two forms of government, the United States and China? So what God is basically saying is, folks, don't be alarmed at the possibility that the United States is gonna have a financial collapse. It must happen. 
So America is going to fall. China is going to fall. How is that going to happen? China is getting its manufacturing stripped away from it. After, since COVID, the world has viewed China as A, a pariah, and B, unable to support the, the global supply chain. They've had all the shortages that have happened. You wait a year for an iPhone. You wait a year for, a, for an automobile. And that how are they going to take the America down? And that's with something called BRICS, which stands for, for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and um, South Africa joining forces with Saudi Arabia to say, we're gonna end the petrodollar, we're gonna end the US's ability to be the world's reserve currency and control us through currency. So God is saying, I'm gonna strip away control of China by trade, control of the US by the dollar, and I am going to put my own system in. And basically we talked about that in detail, but I'll just give you a real quick idea of what that means. It means we're going on to a commodity-based system. We are going to to change to a system that says, instead of making products made in China that are designed to have an expiration date, six months, a year, and you gotta throw it away and build it again, we're gonna have products that are gonna be based on longevity, de designed to last forever, to be reusable, to be repairable, and look at what that's gonna do to our resource consumption. The global elite are saying that we have a shortage of natural resources, well, of course, they're causing the shortage if we go to this new economic system from God where we are conserving our resources, that problem goes away. And the lie that they've given us about the cause of climate change coming from our carbon footprint goes away. So with that, we'll go on down. And this was BRICS. I think I kind of got ahead of myself. But basically, I can make a point. If you look at that map that's on here, you'll see the portion in green and America is part of the G7. We represent 20% of the world's population, but BRICS now represents 80% of the world's population. So if they want to end the US dollar, the US dollar is going to end. That's all there is to it. It's going to end. And so basically we'll move on. And here's where we get into the reason I did this portion, part two, because people were utterly, absolutely, completely confused as to why it was taking so long. So Trump on 2016 went on a world tour and, and I wanna basically go back and take you through the highlights of that tour and show you that was a drip, drip, drip showing us what was going on. So the first play, place he went was Saudi Arabia and the, the prince I, whose name I can't pronounce, he's in the upper picture there, uh, immediately was removed, was arrested along with a bunch of other princes and then Solomon became the prince. Now, what you see in that picture is a famous ceremony that they have every time they're going to go to war, they do the sword dance, or every time there's a change in the leadership in, their, in, in Saudi Arabia, they do a sword dance. Only the crown prince is to hold that sword. They passed it to Trump. So what does that mean? That means that Trump is an ally of Saudi Arabia in what they consider to be a war. So we look at Saudi Arabia, and I think the general public, since they're now involved in BRICS and that's going to collapse the dollar, think they're our enemy. No, Saudi Arabia is performing a function that needs to happen that is God-ordained, which is to bring the dollar down. Now, let me stop there. Don't panic, folks. We're going to have a, a huge financial crash, and it's going to be scary, and it's going to last several months. But I've got a whole show that's on why America, the only nation in the world ordained by God for this purpose, will rise like the phoenix and restore the financial system in the world. Russia can't do it. China can't do it. Iran can't do it. Brazil can't do it. We are the only nation that has enough control over manufacturing, over trade, over natural resources, and the global reach with our Navy to be able to restore after this collapse comes. That's God's appointed purpose to collapse the two governmental systems of man and put his system in and to equalize and elevate the condition of all mankind, which is going to take us into what? The harvest of souls and a period of peace and prosperity that's unheard of. So Larry, you know, that's good news. And that's what should create all this hope for all these people yes. uh, that uh, are feeling hopeless today. They have lots of mental uh, issues going on and, and, uh, lots of things, you know? So, so I, I, I think that's a, <laughs> that's a scary truth 
but but something that uh, can restore our faith. Yes. So I want to go through the nation specifically on a part of BRICS because I think the perception is that they're anti-American. Well, so let's look at Brazil and let's look at China and say, is Brazil really that close to China? Well, the government is the what I believe might be called the fake government, but the people of Brazil basically hold this opinion. We've been de-industrialized de by China, meaning that their standard of living has gone down because China has come in with their free trade and they've undercut them and taken the manufacturing away and they put the people of Brazil in financial hardship. So the people of Brazil are in this for a reason. The people of Brazil and all the people in BRICS and the 80% of the world that's behind them want to be free from control by the US dollar and controlled by China as well. So they're just looking to be able to make purchases of internationally traded commodities in their own currency. It's not because they're hooked at the hip to China. And then we go on down and we come to one that's, I hope most people realize this one, India and China are not friends. They've got a border dispute that's been going on for decades and they're, they're strategically positioning themselves in the, in the Indian Ocean. Basically, China has some vulnerabilities. Uh, the, the Straits of Moloch are only a mile and a half wide. And if that strait should be mined like we did what in O oh, to end the Vietnam War, then trade through that strait is cut off. China has lost its supply chain, but it more importantly has lost its access to oil. 75% of the oil goes through that strait. And in its estimated 90 days, they would be out of oil. So what's happened is China has built what they call the string of pearls between those nations. So if people think, hey, they're bosom buddies, nothing could be further from the truth. And then we go to the next country. We go to China and we go to Russia. And ah, on the surface, they're friends. You know, why? Because, well, Russia is selling a lot of oil to who? China. So they've got an economic you know, reason for being associated. But if we go back in history, which is what God had me do, we find out that Russia has forever been anti-globalist. It was Russia who stopped the formation of the first attempt to create a United Nations. And it was Russia who came in in the Civil War and said to the European nations, no, 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 no. If you guys come into that Civil War on the side, uh, on the side of of the South, we're gonna come in on the side of the North. And so Putin has been and continues to be an anti-globalist. And what's the tell that tells us that? They start a war, they break a nation, they put in a central bank, and the central bank is 90, according to Stalin, 90% of establishing communism in a nation. So there's only three nations in the world that don't have a central bank, two tiny little nations and one great big one, Russia. So Russia is the only nation in the world that isn't controlled from cradle to grave by the central banking system. So they're anti-globalists. So to think that China and Russia are on the same page, uh-uh, not, not, you bet your bippy, it isn't the case. All right, so let's move on. And my computer just keeps messing up. So this is just a supposition on my part, folks. I can't prove this. I'm just gonna lay this out there for you to think about and the question is do you think that the u that the u.s and china are friends are mortal enemies where are we i think it's just possible that the ccp who is clearly our enemy might have fallen under all the stress that's happened economically in china they've had the collapse of the real estate market which is 33 and a third percent of their gdp they, they're having the collapse of their trade, which is 53% of their GDP. And I believe that China's CCP may have fallen, putting Russia, the United States, and China all more or less as allies. Now, they're enemies in other regards, but in this particular instance, I think we may be allies because we all need to have those two governmental systems collapse. And then we come to the story of the day. Russia, 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 Russia. And our government right now that intersects with another thing that's happening, and that's the war in Israel. 
And so basically, what's the government doing? We just came out of a war that cost us $13 trillion, the Mideast War, and practically bankrupt us. So now what are we doing? We're not putting money into our border to keep America safe, to do what Trump said, make America great. We're spending money in Ukraine. There's a bill asking for $25 billion. And the Congress said, well, we don't know if we want to continue funding Ukraine, at least not at that level. So what's the what's Congress trying to do? They say, well, we surely want to help Israel, our number one ally. So if you don't pass the bill to fund Ukraine, we're not going to give you money to fund Israel. So where are we? We're right back to the strategy that they've used for hundreds of years, drive a nation to the death through war and control it. So let's look at Russia and let's see if God might be part of what Putin is doing. There's a justification for him being in this war. It goes back to what we saw with the Cuban Missile Crisis. Basically, they wanted to bring Ukraine into NATO and place missiles right on the border of Russia. And there's the belief that, that Ukraine is a, is a money laundering capital of the world, that they've got bioweapons. And what if they loaded some bioweapons on those missiles and shot them to Moscow? So Putin needed to defend his nation. He asked and asked and asked for them not to do that, and they just, it fell on deaf ears. Now, if we go to the Bible, we find out something interesting that may tell us what Putin is doing. The Bible tells us that he is part of the, Russia is part of the combination beast when we get into tribulation. But it also tells us that the, that the Russia, the bear, is the sleeping bear. So I believe God has sent Russia out now to take out Ukraine because of the money laundering and because of the pedophilia that goes on there but then they have to go back to their own nation. It's not going to be like the news says, where they're going to attack them one country after another after another and try to recreate Mother Russia. The bear is going to go back to sleep after it gets rid of the threat that's facing it. So now we come to Hillary Clinton and Trump and, and uh, Putin. And again, I can't prove this, but I can tell you this, Hillary has done some egregious things, including deleting 34,000 emails. And Putin, the anti-globalist, and Trump, the anti-globalist, are passing a soccer ball back and forth. And basically, Putin says, the ball's in your court. Now, there's a lot of supposition that says that this is signifying that Putin gave Trump all of Hillary's deleted emails. So in this drip, drip, drip process, they always hold the major information until the very end when the opposition can't, can't come out and really do anything about it. So I believe that very shortly we're going to see a, an atomic bomb of truth come out that's going to expose not only Hillary's emails, but Nancy Pelosi's involvement in January the 6th, the truth about the election fraud, etc. So I'm moving on. We're on that tour that Trump went on and we're in the Vatican. And I want you to look at this picture. We've got a Trump that I call the Cheshire Cat, grinning from ear to ear, and the Pope who looks like he swallowed a poison pill. Well, supposedly, they went, Trump went to all these different nations and laid down a stack of information that says, I have it all. You are now puppeted by me. And so I can't prove this, but what is circulating by a lot of different people is that the Vatican who happens to be one of the wealthiest places in the world, and another one of those pieces of geography that's not part of the nation that it resides in, and is part of the evil that control us along with the city of London, the Vatican, and Washington, D.C., had a vast amount of, of gold that they, they got from the people during, during the time when they were doing the Inquisition. That gold just may have been confiscated, and that may be what this picture is indicating. Now we go... To, to Europe, and we see Donald Trump walking in front of the Queen. Nobody has ever done that before. And then we see him with Merkel, and look at the look on her face and on his face. And then we see him with Macron poking Macron in the chest. And then we see him with the head of Canada, and look at that look on Trump's face. So what is he telling us? In every one of those instances, he has delivered a message to those nations saying, we have it all. We have it all. I'm now your puppet, and you're now in my control, not, not the reverse. So now we're going to get into what you might call conspiracy theory, the only thing I've talked about so far that's really not based on fact. And that is this 
Q movement. And basically what I'm showing you is an aerial photograph of the grave site of Kennedy, and it happens to be a Q. And most people don't know that uh, John F. Kennedy Jr. and Donald Trump were lifelong best friends. And there are some who believe that the man to the far right might be uh, John F. Kennedy Jr. in disguise and that he is part of, he did not die, he's part of the, if we want to call it conspiracy theory, the white hats that are trying to take our nation back. So let's give you a little bit of a glimpse into that and see if there could be any truth to it. Can't confirm, but basically we know this. We know that John F. Kennedy was running for Congress and in 1999, he was declared the leader. Right after that, he dies mysteriously in this plane, his body's never found, and Hillary becomes the front runner and gets elected. And we sort of know that there's some belief that Hillary might have a few bodies buried in association with her history. Now, we're almost to the end, folks. And here's what I want you to pay attention to. We are, according to Sung Tzu, a fifth century military strategist, the greatest military mind in the world, says that we're on death ground. You have to look at a war and you have to assess where you are. Are you in the beginning, in the middle, or are you in the end of the final battle? We're at the final battle. So here's the strategy that we've had going on for decades. They push us. When we begin to resist, they back off. And then after a while, they push us again. And then they back off. But now that's not happening. Something's changed. This is a full-blown push. This is the end. So I did a show a couple of weeks ago on 9-11, and I told you how 9-11 laid the groundwork with the Patriot Act for imposition of a legal dictatorship. That's happening again with what's happening in Israel. So what, what we're seeing is we're seeing legislation coming out of the EU, which I've talked about as part is part of the nations that are involved in the in the tribulation and the and the combination beast is now passing legislation that says you know we really want to control this free speech thing and they're trying to say to the media outlets you, know, you don't have a choice anymore if you don't censor according to what we want you to censor we're going to levy gigantic fines on you that could potentially put you out of business and so our freedoms are being taken away, folks. And the only thing protecting us here so far is our Constitution that says we have a First Amendment right. So I need you to understand we're on death ground. This is the time that America has to stand up. We have to have our eyes open. And what I believe is happening in this war now that's going on in Russia, and I read the Ukraine, and it's going on in Israel, is creating that final push that's gonna bring everything together. And I'm expecting that there very likely may be some false flag events to occur in the United States, because what do they wanna do? Create order out of chaos. So I believe that what's happening is the bad guys have said, we're in trouble now. We're like a wounded animal in the forest and we have to make a gigantic push forward and we have to win this war. Well, I believe my Bible tells me that the opposite is gonna happen. Communism is gonna fall, capitalism is gonna fall, and we're gonna have a total reversal. We're gonna have the Esther effect where we win and they lose. Now, this is a rendering had drawn by an artist, and I wanna kinda of close, we've only got one or two more slides. What you see is the combination beast of the book of Revelation. The lion represents England, and they are the mouthpiece of the beast. The four-headed leopard is Russia, we, I mean Germany. We had the Third Reich, and then when in 1989, when the Berlin Wall fell, that meant that, Russia, that Germany became the Fourth Reich. They're part of that. And then we've got the bear, which is Russia that we've talked about. And then we've got the lady on their back, which is signifying the Catholic Church and whose name all abominations have occurred. And then we have that beast, that dragon, with what? the 10 horns with the 10 crowns. And what we're looking at God is God's interpretation of what's going to happen. It's the 10 headed or the 10 horned beast that we have to look at. And what they're trying to do right now is to totally, completely and absolutely collapse us, lock us down, take away our total freedom and implement that 10 nation servile trading block that brings the entire world into servitude, but instead, we're gonna have an avalanche of truth and the people are gonna stand up. The people in the other nations are standing up, 
but America hasn't had enough pain yet. When we get the pain, we're going to stand up. And what there's always a foreshadow. What was the foreshadow that indicates what we need to do? It was we fought a revolutionary war, a bloody war to get our freedom. India simply said, we're going to rally around Mahatma Gandhi. We're going to have rolling strikes. So we're going to take the economic cloud away from India, I mean, from China, from Britain and get our freedom. And so basically they broke, they broke Britain's economic system and Britain says, you're free. So the people of the world are now standing up and saying, no, we're not going to participate in your economic system of slavery. Soon there'll be enough of an avalanche of truth that the American people are going to stand up and do the same. But first, we have to be brought to our knees because God wants to usher in the harvest of souls. Okay. Hey, Larry, we have run out of time. And but we're I, done. That's, you you know, I tell end. you what, I think you were done. So this show is brought to you by Brad Pisto, certified fiduciary financial planner, right in Ozark, Missouri. And John Whitaker, who now is the new owner of Springfield Nissan and Springfield Kia. We'll talk about them more next week. Uh, you gave us enough information for an entire week or month in 45 minutes. I hope you all enjoyed this information today. Uh, we'll have Larry back on again, uh, but uh, just have a great rest of the week. And we appreciate you here at Axe Ministry. And um, I tell you what, Larry, you're a difference maker. I, I love that information. It makes us think, it makes us pray, pray for our country, pray for Israel, pray for everything in this world. Thank you. It's all going to be all right. It's going to be all right.